So Tupac, he get bailed out of prison by Suge Knight. He goes to L.A. You still in New York. How did that come about? Give me a detailed account of Tupac flying you out to L.A. and you spending time with Tupac. That was always the plan, that I was going to join him out there. Um, Keisha was supposed to as well. But it, was a, it was an elaborate plan, but, you know, everything, you know, they ended up separating. And, but he flew her out to Atlanta from, he told me, um, for Thanksgiving. And then after she went out there, I went out to L.A. And, you know, I was, it was a good time. We had a very good time. Um, so he flew me out first class, JFK to LAX, um, his assistant, I think his name was Hendrick or Ken Kendrick. He picked me up and, um, you know, I'm like, okay, but he told me Kendrick was going to pick me up. Um, so I, I went with him, we get in the car and he pops in. Pac's new album that hasn't dropped yet. And he starts playing some songs for me off of it. And he's like, I gotta play this for you though. He was like, he told me to play this for you. And I'm like, word, oh, okay. He's like, he's talking about you in you know, two of the songs that he played. And uh, you know, I felt amazing. You know, I was excited. Um, and one of them was I Ain't Mad At Ya. And the other one, which I was like, here we go again. It's the picture in vocal form, which is, um, I'd rather be a nigga. And I'm like, oh, okay, here we go with you. Um, and you know, we pulled up to the Beverly Hills Hotel and um, you know, when I got up to the room, he opened the door and I just jumped on him and uh, we chilled. Then he's like, get dressed, babe, we going out to eat. And he took me out to Monty's. I hadn't seen Psych, uh, none of the boys, you know, when I got to the hotel, I just seen his assistant, his assistant's chick and him. And um, so I was so happy to see all of them because like while he was in jail, uh, well, even before that, before he went to jail and I went to Atlanta, like I got to meet them, hang out with them. When he was in jail, I got to, um, I think that's when I met Muta and I met, cause I, yeah, I met his little brother when I was in it. No, I think I met, I met, wait, let's take it back. I hadn't seen them since Atlanta. And then when he was in jail, when they came to visit, cause um, you know, they would come stay up there. Like I said, I was staying in the hotel. I was living out of the hotel. So they would come, we'd have like the adjoining suites. And you know, I was like spending a lot of time with them, getting to know them. So it was good to see all of them. I was excited, you know, and that was a, it was a good time. We drank, we ate, we laughed, you know. I was like, all right, good. You know, this is this is where you need to be. This is this is this is the life you need to be having. Um, and I remember uh, the next day. I played him this song that I had listened to because that was kind of something that we used to do. We used to, he used to play a lot of old school music, a lot of uh, rock, or every type of genre you could think of. And he'd like put me on to certain songs. I'd put him on to certain songs. So um, there was this song in uh, Jamaica, and I was like, this beat is sick. I could see you totally killing this. So I played it for him and he was like, I bet. So he dropped some money and was like, go, you know, we right over here in Beverly Hills, Rodale Drive. He was like, go, you know, go shopping. He was like, give me a couple hours. I'm gonna be back. And I'm like, all right, cool. When he came back, he's all like happy, excited, you know, and he played for me the song that they made, which was Who Do You Believe In? And I was like, oh my God, you actually really like listened to, to me and liked it. And I was like, that's dope. So, you know, that he took me to, he, he had just, during the time when I was out there, he had just gotten his apartment on Wilshire. He still didn't have the house in Calabasas yet. And um, so we went over there, you know, I got to go see the, you know, before the furniture and everything came in. And, you know, we took me to Pollo Loco. That was his spot, like a little, like, you know, a Mexican like Popeyes or whatever, but it's grilled chicken. 
you know, and he just showed me, you know, went to the studio with him. Like I said, oh my God. No, that was the second day. The third day is when he went and did the track. The second day he took me to the studio, showed me all the songs that he was working on. I was like, wow, because Me Against the World was pretty good. But All Eyes on Me was crazy. And I was like, this is going to kill. Like, it was crazy. I, I, I just knew that was going to be like a monster hit. So that was cool, sitting in the studio, listening to music, drinking, smoking, boys running around, playing football outside, talking shit, laughing. I want to backtrack to a comment you made earlier. You said that when you landed in L.A., his assistant, Kendrick Wells, he picked you up and he played some songs for you that Tupac made for you. What songs was it? It was, um, I ain't mad at you. He was like Mike Tyson, me, and I think uh, one of his childhood friends he was talking about in that song. And then um, the other one is I'd rather be a, and what is it? I'd rather be a nigga with him and, um, oh my God. Richie Rich, I think maybe. I'd have to Google that. Yeah, yeah, Richie Rich. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, yeah, he was in that song. Yeah, yeah so I was like, that one was like, oh, okay. You know, um, you know, for a long time I couldn't listen to his music. But now when I hear some of his songs, and especially like those two songs, it just takes me to somewhere knowing that they were about me. And I know like, even though he didn't tell me on the Machiavelli album, I know like um, the song Just Like Daddy, there was references towards me. Could have been other people as well, but I'm pretty certain that that was geared towards well, me stay. as well. It was a song he made that um, I think it was called Just Like Daddy. No, I know the song Just Like Daddy, but what's the uh, I, I, um, I know it was like one part where it said something about my fake friend trying to fuck you. And then I don't recall on the spot right now what else it was. But I, I heard like little little things that I know, you know, was me and him.